everyone. You welcome to this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. I am Babla Jonathan. In this edition of the program, we're going to be taking a critical look at the terror and bloody twist of the Anglophone crisis. We'll equally be looking at democracy in Cameroon with focus on the presidential and other elections that are expected to be organized in the Republic of Cameroon this year. In some few seconds, discover our guest. Our guest in this edition of the program is a presidential candidate. He was chosen by his comrades to lead the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM political party, at the upcoming uh, presidential election, and that was during the national convention of that uh, political party. Professor Maurice Camto, president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM political party. You're welcome to the program. Thank you for hosting me. As I earlier indicated, you were chosen by your comrades to be the party's flag bearer at the presidential election that was during the national convention of the political party, the second national convention of the CRM. We're going to be coming back uh, to that in the later part of the program in greater details. Let's start with the Anglophone uh, crisis, and we're going to be looking at the terror and bloody twist of the crisis affecting the northwest and southwest regions of the country and by extension the entire nation and i want to indicate that at the creation of your political uh, party you wrote about this uh, crisis in your vision even before it escalated about two years now correct since the very beginning we express our concern uh, about uh, the what is known as anglophone problem and we said there is indeed a problem in the two English-speaking regions of our country, Northwest and Southwest. And we indicated clearly in our vision that the only way to settle the matter is genuine dialogue, inclusive dialogue, involving people and leaders from the regions to bring our heads together to find a long-lasting solution to the issue. Since then, nobody listened to us. And as you know, as usually, the government uh, look elsewhere. Unfortunately, two years, uh, five years later, or four years later, 2016, uh, the crisis burst out, and we are where we are today. And apart from uh, looking elsewhere, government uh, notably some members like the Minister of Territorial Administration, Tanganji Paul, has continued to say that there is no Anglophone problem. It is really a heartbreak issue, and to listen to such a higher, high-ranking uh, personality in uh, our country, saying that is just unbelievable. Uh, one could have expected the minister at least to say, let us look into what is going on in the regions. Instead, he said there is no problem. And now he's touring the regions, trying to say he's bringing peace what piece to what issue because if there is no problem then we don't have to go and see people uh, it is very unfortunate in our, in our country that uh, people from the government would uh, like to uh, hold this type of posture and uh, my hope is that they would not now realize that there is a serious problem in those regions and that time time has come to stop bloodshed Exactly. Enough is enough. And you made a very uh, strong statement during the National Convention of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement in this slide in yeah. which you indicated that uh, the bloodbath in the two Anglophone regions must stop. It but must this, stop now. But at, but at the same time, government has continued to implement a military force in these two regions and there has been a rise in confrontations between armed civilians and defense and security forces. How is it going to stop in this kind of context? You know, I don't know. I don't know how a leader, a political leader, uh, a state governing leader, can sleep in peace knowing that Cameroonians are shooting on Cameroonians. I cannot sleep in peace knowing that some of my people are hiding in forest over there in Levi Allen, uh, uh, Mamfe regions and so on and so forth because their homes and villages have been burned down to ashes. I cannot, I will never sleep in peace knowing that my people are suffering in refugee camps in Nigeria and that's why I say it must stop now. 
It's not a game. We cannot play with the sufferings and the faith, the faith and the lives of our people. It must stop and it's for the government to take the necessary step to make sure that that bloodshed stop. We have made proposals, genuine proposals to government, openly and uh, through normal channels. Two proposals, a, two a proposal with two aspects. The first aspect being to send there, the northwest and southwest regions, a peace building delegation composed of some traditional rulers credible traditional rulers from all over the country because it's not an issue for the two regions only. It's a national issue. It's a Cameroonian problem composed of traditional, uh, credible traditional rulers and uh, uh, churches leaders, let's say religious leaders, because although we are a secular state, they have an impact on the populations in churches, in mosques. We should select some of them to bring peace and wipe the tears of our compatriots, of our people, of our brothers and sisters from the regions. After that, the second aspect of our proposals was to set up, to, to put uh, the framework of, of a genuine dialogue, inclusive dialogue, including all the leaders, the, the, the genuine leaders, the authentic, the legitimate leaders uh, from the Anglophone area. I, I, I have said, if they don't know how to organize such a dialogue, if they don't know uh, who, who they will pick up to be part of dialogue, let them in involve me. I'm serious. I'm really committed Mr. as a President, Cameroonian. Yes. When you're talking about the genuine uh, leaders as far as the uh, Anglophone regions are concerned, who are you referring to? I'm thinking of people like Honorable, MP Honorable Joseph Wilba. There is no way you can settle this matter without involving leaders like him because he was the one bringing the uh, issue in the National Assembly, in the Parliament, which is, the, is still the proper place uh, for that uh, issue to be discussed. Instead, they, 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 they push him and uh, uh, unfortunately <coughs> he was forced to, to hide for some time because maybe his own life was at risk. So uh, I'm thinking of people like him, but you also have uh, people like uh, Barista uh, Congo Felix Agbombala. You, you also uh, have people like uh, Professor Simon Munzu, you know, uh, uh, his Lord uh, Justice uh, uh, Ayapol. And uh, frankly speaking, I, I, I think that we should also think of some of those who are claiming to be secessionist. Although I don't believe in secession as a, a solution uh, uh, to the Anglophone crisis, the, 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 we will fight bitterly as far as we are concerned in CRM, against any attempt to split our country, to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, you know, to, to bring partition to, uh, to our country. Having said that, I think that we should organize an inclusive dia dialogue, because if you push some of them aside, you will say the matter is settled, but it is not. So let us bring them uh, to the table of uh, dialogue and listen to them and know exactly what they are claiming and then we will find a genuine solution but, to all But many of these people you, you're citing seem to have lost the confidence of the people considering that when you look at what is happening now in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, mm -hmm. it is uh, clear that the secessionists have taken the upper hand and the people are now listening to uh, these secessionists, notably the Sisiku, Ayuk Tabe and others who are now in jail. Yes, but should they not be invited to the dialogue table as well? That's what I, I'm saying precisely. I said you should invite them because jailing them will not solve the problem. You will jail them. You can even kill them and new uh, Abitayuk, uh, Tabe Ayuk will uh, rise up, will come out. So to settle such a matter, you, you need to bring all uh, the, 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 the component, all the stakeholders around a t table of dialogue and listen to them. It is not be because they are claiming uh, the partition of Cameroon that they will grant that you will grant that to them. It is not because people are asking for decentralization, sorry, or federalism. But it is only through a genuine dialogue. I always say that I used to say that we have intelligent, talented people in Cameroon, and if we bring our talents together and our hearts together, I'm convinced that we'll come out 
with a genuine, long-lasting solution to that issue. And the problem now is that the current leadership is not willing to settle the matter. And that is the problem. And my appeal to my fellow compatriots from the two regions concerned is that let us get rid of a poor leadership, of a poor governance of our country, and come as a family, sit down and settle our problem. We are all Cameroonians. And I know for sure that many, if not all, of those who are fighting today are patriot, Cameroonian patriots. They are ready to come to the table of dialogue and give a bright future to their country. We'll certainly be coming back to that in greater details in the later part of the uh, program, talking about getting rid of the, the present uh, leadership. That is mm -hmm. probably through the ballot box. Uh, Absolutely. And Absolutely. But, but this call for a dialogue has been streaming in. Um, since this crisis escalated about two years, uh, close to two years ago, mm -hmm. from uh, political leaders in the country and abroad, from the international organizations and so on. Mm -hmm. And even the President of the Republic has talked about dialogue on a number of occasions, but this seems not to be yielding any fruits because there is dialogue, that is, uh, there's call for dialogue, and there's implementation of military solution on the ground. Yeah. What explains this uh, confusion? It is, it is very unfortunate, unfortunate. And it's exactly what I'm saying, that uh, I see no uh, will to really solve the problem uh, from this government. And that's the problem. Otherwise, how comes that uh, for the past two years, nothing serious, have been no, no serious step have been taken uh, to the direction of organizing a genuine dialogue. You know, they, they said, oh, yes, at the beginning it was a professional matter, you know, concerning lawyers and teachers. But uh, maybe it, they, 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 they don't want to see exactly what is going on. And even it was the case. When now people are coming to politi po political issue, will you not settle the matter because uh, at the very beginning it was a professional matter? I, it doesn't make sense. What I'm trying to say is that uh, there is call uh, for dialogue from all over the country and from abroad. But the current government has shown that uh, it is not concerned by, by, by dialogue. Uh, it is not really... Uh, uh, ready to organize a genuine dialogue. My, my, despite, my, the, despite the fact that the crisis is uh, taking a uh, terror and bloody twist that's with pro yeah, thousands that's, of persons. Who that's a problem dead. and no one can uh, understand why they are behaving the way they are behaving. It is like they, they want to, the, the, you know, to put chaos in, in part of uh, the country to make sure that uh, uh, it, help, it, it will help them win the, the coming elections, so they will take uh, advantage uh, uh, of that to say that we cannot organize uh, the elections because the, the, there is no peace or security in those regions. But in any case, w we, we have been clear, we have been very vocal on that. Uh, if they, they, they want to take advantage from that to organize a sleep of uh, the date of election, uh, we will fight against that because uh, there is no way we can miss uh, that the, the opportunity to go to the election this year to give Cameroonians a chance to express themselves, their anger, the, their disagreement. And this is also uh, an occasion for me to launch an appeal to my brothers and sisters from Northwest and Southwest to go, go and register and go vote the, uh, comes the day of elections to express your disagreement with this government, to express your anger, to tell them that we, can, we cannot continue the way we are continuing, uh, not only that, we should stop killings in these, these two parts of uh, uh, the two, two regions of our country, but we should build up the villages that have been burned down. We should uh, help people start new business, new lives, make sure that our people, our, our children go back to school after two blank years, uh, academic years. So this uh, is my commitment. And I put it an, as a number one issue on my agenda. Should uh, the Cameroonians give me the honor and privilege to serve them as the next president of this country, it would be on top of my agenda. Right. And 
earlier on you indicated that the people that government has been sending so far to these regions to try to negotiate, to try to talk to the people, to try to preach, uh, to preach the message of uh, peace uh, are not the right persons. But many will be asking the question, where is the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, the CRM political party, the midst of this crisis? Since the very beginning, we have been trying our best. First of all, we tried to get in touch, in contact with some of the leaders, to talk to them, to know exactly what are their expectations. And we talked to them. We even, at the very beginning of the crisis, convey their sentiments to the government through the appropriate channels to make sure that they know the feelings of uh, those who were uh, claiming uh, uh, the reforms of uh, 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 judicial system, of uh, the education system, and at large the, the reform of the state, the form of our state itself. But nothing happened. And then uh, we, we launched an appeal and we made proposals to the government because at the end of the day, if I go there and meet people and we agree on, on something, I cannot implement it only because I'm not the government. I'm not, uh, I don't have the majority in the parliament. I'm, I'm not the executive. So on, on, uh, uh, unless I, I, have, I receive a mandate from the government to go there and talk to people and bring the result for them to implement it, it will be useless to pretend that I can go there and settle the matter by myself. That's why I say, if you give me the opportunity to serve you, Cameroonian people, Cameroonian from the northwest and the southwest, believe me, will settle the matter within the three months, the maximum, from the, the, the very day I come to power. But Mr. President, um, besides the Social Democratic Front, which is the main opposition political party in the country that has been on the field in the northwest and in the southwest region uh, since this crisis started, uh, you are one of the um, major and rising opposition political parties in this country. Don't you think that if the president of the CRM political party and other top officials of the party mm. are on the ground mm. uh, in these regions, talking to the people, is it not going to make an impact? We, we are on the ground. Uh, whether I myself has gone there is another issue. But I, I, I was, for instance, in, the north, uh, in, the, in, uh, in Limbe and uh, in uh, and Boya. Uh, in Boya first, uh, some three weeks ago, and uh, in Limbe uh, some ten days ago, to talk to people. I've met some of them. I, there is no need to call their names here, to talk to them. Uh, it, was a, it, it was not a political rally. It was not a political meeting. I want to touch people, to talk to them, to know what is their mindset now and where we can move, in, in what direction we can move uh, 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 rightly to bring a, a solution to the current problem. I, I intend to go to the no Northwest, but, but uh, uh, although I was not in the Northwest these days myself, remember that I held a meeting, a very successful meeting in Bamenda on the 25th of June 2016. Uh, since then, our comrades are in the field. Our Secretary General if, is from the Northwest, is Barrister Don Christopher from whom, and he's been uh, all this time uh, in the field. Our secret, uh, the, the leaders, the women, the leader of the women wing, uh, wing of uh, our political party is uh, 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 Barrister uh, Mispa uh, Awasum. Uh, she's uh, in the field, and for now she's still the, 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 the regional secretary for our party in Northwest. She's in the field. She, they are preparing uh, our, our, our trip there. I'll go there, not necessary to hold a very large meeting, because many people are looking for meetings. Being efficient is not only through meetings. Public, uh, popular meetings. It, it is also to touch upon the leaders, talk to them, go to traditional rulers, rulers talk to them, and know exactly what, they are, what are their expectations and how can we move in the right direction. It's what we, we are doing. We are not folding our hands and look at people dying and doing nothing. You will see me in the field in the coming days. One of uh, the, the, uh, the, the important issue on our agenda was to complete our convention and to make sure that we have appointed our 
a candidate for the, co for the coming uh, ele uh, presidential elections before we start going in the field. In the coming days, we will be seeing us in the field, including in the two regions. Now, I'll equally put this uh, question to you. The President of the Republic indicated that before the organization of these elections, uh, apart from the senatorial election, that does not concern the, the masses, yeah. uh, because those who are voting are the municipal councillors. Before the elections, like the presidential, the legislative, and the municipal election that concern directly the masses, he was going to make sure that uh, things return to normalcy mm -hmm. in these two Anglophone uh, regions. Mm -hmm. How should he go about this? What should government do at this point in time? that the crisis has taken a uh, terror and bloody twist in order to ensure that elections are effectively organized in this country. We are armless. We are armless. Uh, looking at what the government, the very government who made such a declaration is doing. You know, since the statement of the head of state saying that he'll put in place uh, decentralization, many people were, were hoping that he'll organize the regional election and put in place regions before even organizing the senatorial elections but that does not hap did not happen and we wonder why and uh, yet we are looking forward to hearing from the government on any uh, serious solution uh, for the settling of the matter in the both regions but nothing has been said or done till now so uh, that's why in the Cameroon Renaissance movement our conviction is that we can only find a serious solution to that matter through the coming election. Change the leadership. Give opportunity to a new leadership in this country to bring Cameroonians together. And we'll settle the matter. It's not too late. After all, we have been uh, uh, expecting something from the government uh, uh, since the past two years and nothing happened. Uh, we are now uh, uh, six months before the coming elections of six or five months. It means that we can still uh, be patient, if I may say so, uh, if unfortunately uh, there were no, n not uh, so many lives, uh, uh, you know, uh, lost every day and uh, uh, many blood, uh, too much bloodshed. But after, the, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying, to, the message I'm trying to convey is that if in October, 2018, we give a new chance to our country with a new leadership. I'm sure that will settle the matter once for all. Now, you're talking about change through the ballot box. Yes. But some political uh, leaders think that elections cannot hold in this context. And so the only solution is a political transition without elections. Cameroonians should cease power. How, how do you get that transition. You, if you can only get transition if the current uh, government or institution are not functioning, are not there. But if they are still there, it means that you will go and break a transition from them. How can you uh, expect that? How can, you, can that happen? The very people who want to st stick in power and you will go and beg them to give you a transition. I don't know how you reach there. That's why our conviction is that you can only have change in this country through elections, through ballot box. All right, Mr. President, we're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we'll discuss that in greater detail. It's time for us to take a look at what the newspapers reported this week, the press review with Smart Jigan Gebre. <laughs> The Anglophone crisis covered front pages of most newspapers alongside appointments of senators by the President of the Republic and the ghastly car crash in Ombe that took away five lives. On the Anglophone crisis, the voice captioned, Blood flows in Comlan as soldiers shoot any young man. This is coming at a time that the prosecution wants death penalty for Mancho and others. The Post newspaper on its part reported that Ambazonian forces ordered government officials to leave Boya and the military court place hide and seek with Mancho's trial. 
The media, seemingly disturbed with the ongoing crisis, is asking questions. Is the bloodshed and devastation not too much? Who benefits from the bloody and costly war? And who bears the brunt for killing and destruction? The Sun newspaper in one of its publications said Army Chief of Staff's convoy attacked in the southwest, causing him to retreat from his journey. The same newspaper quoted the Army Chief saying, you are safe in the hands of the military. This was after his visit in the Northwest and Southwest regions. The Star newspaper says after visit to camp in Nigeria, United Nations bemoans the state of Cameroonian refugees. On the appointment of senators, the horizon captioned democracy under siege as only CPDM emerges with a parliamentary group. Even newspaper says Bia denies Mfon Mukete retirement while the post tells us Bia makes mockery of Cameroon's advanced democracy as the upper house is now reverted to one party affair. The median terms Bia as the master dribbler as he appoints UPC senator from Lebialem and the son says the CPDM to lord it over new senate with its only group. The poor state of our road network was also brought to the limelight with the post announcing that three Boya council workers and others perish in car crash. The son says Mayor Ekema loses two brothers in ghastly car crash while the Eden captioned it as a black Sunday at Ombe Bridge. In one of its publications, the Gaijan Post worried about the aging government asked if Bia's romance with the aging is a punishment or a compensation. The Rambler comes back to the fake certificate saga of Ekema Patrick and reported that Mayor seeks legal protection, while the Gaijan Post backed up this story by saying court orders Yubi to stop Ekema's certificate withdrawal process and also wants Yubi authorities against holding any meeting, making any public statement on the matter. Meanwhile, the post weekender indicated that Constitutional Council member Professor Kui says he will serve the people and not Paul Beer. He goes ahead to give reasons for his resignation from partisan politics. Welcome back. That was the press review by Smart Njikan Gabriel. And this year, there are four other elections after the senatorial elections that are expected to be organized in the country. Uh, that is the presidential election, the legislative, the municipal, and perhaps the regional elections. And I guess it's a presidential uh, candidate, Professor Maurice Campton, national president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM political party. You're looking forward to uh, unseat President Paul Bia and take over power. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you intend to do that in this context? I rely on Cameroonian people. That is our strength because we believe in our people. That is why since the beginning of this program I have been launching appeal not only to my fellow compatriots, to my brothers and sisters from the Northwest and Southwest, but also to all Cameroonians to realize that the government of a country is something which concern each and every citizen and they should express their will receive them in about free fair and transparent elections election. yes Be about because it is the only way to change to bring change in Cameroon peacefully because we have been advocating for a peaceful change and you can get there only through elections and through 
ballot box. And that is exactly why I was asking you, how do you intend to do this, to take over power in this present context? Context referring to a limping democracy, mm -hmm. according to uh, what uh, you political leaders are saying, mm -hmm. that democracy in Cameroon today is a, a, a limping dog, so to yeah. speak, yeah. Uh, characterized by fraud mm -hmm. and uh, all what we can describe mm -hmm. as far as democracy, mm -hmm free, fair, transparent elections in this country is concerned. September 2013, we made a, the assessment of our current uh, electoral code and uh, we can see some or, some or many loopholes and shortcomings. And we made proposals to the government, first of all through our MP in the parliament, but uh, they didn't even consider that uh, draft pro uh, that bill, uh, pro proposal bill, uh, in violation, in clear violation of their bylaws. Uh, but uh, despite the fact that they overlooked our proposals, we move on sensitizing Cameroonians on those loopholes. And uh, believe me, we have come to realize that the first weakness of the opposition in the past was not to was not to be able to put election in vigilator and give rooms to uh, the, uh, the the current ruling political party to fraud uh, uh, the, 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 the much they could that's why our first commitment it is to put invigilators or observers in all polling stations during the, next, the coming elections that's the first point. The second is that we have realized that uh, the electoral card that has not been withdrawn by the alleged uh, pro, uh, uh, owners or those who have been registered are, are used during, uh, during the election day, the electoral day, for people from that ruling party It is forbidden during that period to move from one city to another, but they will do so. And we have that experience during the 2013 elections. And we have decided to stop that. The third element is that they used to put polling station in barracks, uh, chiefdoms, and so and so uh, for private uh, property, uh, pri private uh, uh, compounds, uh, to say so. And we have taken the decision to warn the government that should that happen during the next elections, we'll fight bitterly against that because we are, we, we, we are on the side, of the, the side of the law. If the government cannot uh, make sure that the law is respected, then we'll uh, help the government doing so. Your we'll, illegal mind. Huh? Yes, that's it. So this has just to, to, to quote some few elements that uh, uh, decided us to take the decision to go to elections because... Uh, if you wait uh, until you have a, a very good uh, electoral code uh, which, which will guarantee free and fair elections in this country, we'll never have it because they know that it is their only, uh, only way to survive as, the, as a government, to, 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 to maintain themselves in, government, in the government. They would, so they will not accept that. They know perfectly well. And we will use that very electoral code to beat them. And that's why we are counting on the full mobilization of our people to go and register massively to go and vote and control their vote because it is only from there that we'll have the victory. Remember that it Bring the results. And for the people to be mobilized uh, in their numbers massively, as you indicated, to vote for a candidate, they need to be convinced. They need Absolutely. to be sure that this is going to be a good leader. Yeah. So what are you telling them? Give me uh, 
this opportunity to elaborate a little on our program. Our program is composed of five pillars. Uh, We want to reform or revise uh, the Constitution. Modifications uh, will be on, first of all, uh, the duration. to modification would apply after the first mandate of seven years then if for instance it it, it is five years that after the first term then the second term will be five years we'll discuss that but for now the key issue and the the principle is that the limitation of the numbers of the mandate of the, the, the position of uh, the President of the Republic in, in, in our country. The second is the two rounds ele presidential elections Be because there is no way. Look at now a, 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 a presidential candidate can win the election with uh, 50, 15 percent, 10, 20 percent, 25 percent. Remember that in 1992 the current president uh, won the election with 39%, meaning that 39% of the voters, not of the Cameroonians, you know, chose him as the president. We think that we need more legitimacy for a president to rule the country and to make sure that he has the support of all Cameroonians. See, th the third point is to bring down the electoral age from 20 to 18, because there is no reason why... Uh, a young Cameroonian of 18 years can be jailed uh, at 18 uh, when he is liable and cannot uh, be consider, considered as mature enough to choose his leader at 18. So that's why we think it is right time now to bring the electoral age from 20 to 18. And we'll try to make to review and to, go, to have a more balanced relationship between the head of state and the prime minister. A prime minister, head of government, so to speak, because this is how they call him. Is he really a head of go the head of government in our country nowadays? We want to make him a full head of the government with powers. The president will conceive the, polit the policy of the nation and the head of the government will be in charge of the implementation of that policy with the full power to really implement it. And that's how we see uh, the, the executive, for instance. We look at the judiciary uh, and uh, not uh, just to reform it to, in a cosmetic way to put uh, uh, the English judicial heritage in our judicial system, but to make sure that if need be, we'll have a common law system in the two Anglophone regions, if that is the will of the people from that region, or if that is not the will, if they want a united and single system to make sure that we take the maximum of good, good practices from that uh, experience of common law to the national system we'll build up with all Cameroonians. Political aspect uh, is to build up the living together. The country is too much divided. Uh, not only uh, tribalism is flourishing, but also that issue of Anglophone. So we want to calm down, to cool down our people, and to bring peace back, and to make sure that as a one single peop uh, people we build a bright future, because we have a bright future ahead of us, provided that we settle all the matters. And I was the going to ask yes. you, Mr. President, I was going to ask you, uh, the people who are in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon would want to know how will Professor Maurice Canto, his collaborators, the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, uh, settle this problem, this Anglophone problem, from its root? You know, this, uh, uh, we're talking about marginalization, mm. we're talking about non-respect.
respect of the Constitution, mm. we're talking about several issues like this. Mm. So, in practical terms, what are the solutions that you're proposing to this problem? Part of the solution, if not the core of the solution, will come out from the dialogue. But let me tell you my own uh, appraisal of the, the, the issue. I think that what our people from the Northwest and Southwest are looking for it's you know more autonomy in the ruling and in the management of their own affairs and indeed it is all the regions of Cameroon who are looking for that and that I agree with them that we should have a country with more autonomy there is no need for somebody who is living in a Yumajok or in uh, in Wa or in Yang to come to Yaoundé to, you know, to just to resolve a simple matter that could have been settled in Bamenda or in Boya. So we, they need more autonomy, large autonomy. I'm ready to, you know, to, if I'm in position of a president of the republic, yes, to admit that I want a country with large autonomy to the regions. If we uh, apply that to all the ten regions of the country, the specificity of the two regions should be taken into consideration and that's why one my, of my idea to have a special status for Northwest and Southwest region to take into account their specificity, their historical uh, specificity, their historical heritage from the English rule and uh, w whether we call the, the, the form, the form of state, uh, regionalism or federalism will be, will be a matter to be settled during the dialogue. That's why I used to say I cannot take a stand on the, on, the, on the appellation, you know, on how do you label it. It is for the dialogue to come out with that. The most important is the content. Let us agree on the content and we'll, be, we'll decide whether we call it reg uh, regionalism or decentralization. I would like to add up that if you take some countries, they will say the, it, it is regionalism. But when you look in, into uh, the practical functioning of that regionalism, you will realize that it is even f beyond the federalism. You go to Spain, for instance, you will see that when we are, you know, maybe you, I'm sure you are aware of what is going on in Catalonia. They are more than a federal state. They have a regional government. They have a regional parliament. They are, in fact, they want uh, independence now just because of taxation. They want more uh, taxes to, 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 to be left to, to the regional government instead of going to the federal government. Otherwise, they are fully uh, autonomous. So we can have uh, a large autonomy in Cameroon and still use the term of regionalism. So we, didn't, we should not stick on the appellation. We, we absolutely want to call it uh, federalism. We, we, we want regionalism. We'll discuss all that in the, in the framework of the dialogue, I'm sure, will come out with something acceptable for all Cameroonians. And at the end of the day, the people are expecting that they will be able to have justice in this country. They will be able to have food on their table. They will be able to travel from one part of the country to the other without going through a nightmare and so on and so forth. Absolutely. You look at the infrastructure. Look at how between uh, Mbuda and, uh, and Bamenda, it is just, just unbelievable, unpracticable in our country in 2018 that you cannot easily go from Baminda to next door uh, Mbuda, uh, not to talk to Bafusam and to Yaoundé. It is something unbelievable in such a rich country. So we have something to do. Anglophone Cameroonians are full Cameroonians. They are not second-class Cameroonians. They are patriots. The country is where, in terms of nation-building, thanks to, to their contribution. So there is no one, nobody in this country should let them have the feeling that they are second class Cameroonians. And believe me, under our leadership, that will never happen again. And one of the key elements I want to introduce tomorrow is that there will be no civil servant of the state of this country. That would not, that would, uh, somebody who will be a civil servant who, is, who cannot speak English. No, oh, French. No. So we, uh, we were talking of infrastructure. Can I elaborate a little bit more on that? Go ahead, look, Mr. look at so our our proposals or our vision and program on infrastructure is first of all make sure that power is available to all Cameroonians. There is no way you can talk of uh, a nation 
which is in independent uh, since 1960-61. And yet there are corners, many areas of our country with no power, with no clean water. So we'll make sure that stop. We, we, will, we want to make power available because you cannot de develop uh, your economy, your industry without power. And we want a combined approach of power, not only hydraulic power, but also uh, photovoltaic power, meaning using, using solar power and using wind power, because our country uh, can provide this type of uh, electricity or power to not only to our industry, industry, but to our people. We want to emphasize on agriculture, and you can s succeed in agriculture, provided you put in place three pillars. The first one is to settle the matter of the, uh, the, the land matter, the land problem, to make sure that if you have a piece of land and you start your agriculture, people will not come out and chase you because they say, okay, it is not your land and so on and so forth. We, we want to organize uh, a national meeting with traditional rulers and other elites to make sure that we come out with a solution on how to use our land properly. The second pillar to succeed in agriculture is settle the issue of seeds. You know, they will say that they will want to increase, to increase the production of uh, maize or cocoa in, the, in, in, in Cameroon. But the, the, the farmers will go out and will not find the seeds. We want to set up a national body in charge of producing and making available seeds to farmers. The third one is fertilizers. To make sure that fertilizers is available. But we want to combine fertilizer, fertilizers where need be and uh, uh, biologic agriculture. Agriculture because we have a market, an international market for that. And you can only expand our agriculture if we, you mechanize them. And the mechanization of the agriculture is not only uh, you know, buying big tractors. You start with you know, simple mechanization. With, if you have uh, two horses or two cows with a saw, you will help farmers. All right, Mr. President, we are going to take interviews of the week and we'll be right back in a moment. We are equally afraid because it's good Mbanga is a stone true, so you can equally extend to Mbanga if care is not taken. We came to provide some, some, some help, some aid for our citizens from um, the Meme Division that are here on, in Banga. The complaints, it's true, they cannot be uh, taking care of us if they are at home, but at least for the moment it is very encouraging and we hope it will be the same until they return home, whenever there will be peace at uh, EDG. In the southwest region, uh, classes are going on normally in most of our institutions, especially those at areas that are not affected by the trouble that we have. Uh, the areas that are affected, uh, classes are not going on there. In Yaoundé, you know, some schools have done their best to try to expand and taking all the students who have come from the northwest and the southwest. I'm Paul uh, Sejang Ogwendum Elvis. As people can see, I'm, uh, I'm from the Presidential Guard. We were well trained in, so, in a such way that we can know how to intervene in some improvised explosive devices. We are prepared or fit to fight against any improvised devices that is being placed anywhere. We can detect them, define them, and we, we treat them. We even destroy them. We were caught for a fire incident in the central market here in Douala. After the intervention, we have an account of 12 stores that were burnt, uh, 10 of which are totally burnt down and two others partially burnt. The small and medium-sized enterprise uh, are facing problems all over the world. And uh, every country has its specificities in these problems. If you don't have good prepare projects, if you don't have, uh, you know, we call it bankable projects, it will be difficult to, for you to raise capital, to raise loan. So you do have these two key problems of 
having good projects and being able to raise equity. This is, uh, you know, investor fund and also have loan. You have to deal with both uh, challenges, you know, to have a strong company. We are very proud to see that uh, a private organization, uh, what we call usually the patronat, is now tackling the issue of those problems by helping the state to solve problems of competitiveness of enterprise. And uh, we came to launch the very first, the very first uh, development center of SMEs in Cameroon. This is, uh, I mean, a progress in terms of um, uh, economic model of organization for private sector because they are trying to solve problems themselves. Equity funding, this is a particular services which we need to see how, you know, they will happen. And after that, to help a company to build a business plan and also to structure bankable projects. The president said uh, during the closing of the session that uh, for um, a telephone company like Orange, for instance, um, all journalists who already have their cards have um, a reduction for some complete uh, 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 free calls. Any product you want to buy from Orange Cameroon, be it a modem, be it a telephone, you have a reduction. And recently we equally got into a partnership with SN Brussels for flights. Everybody with uh, a press card has a 15% reduction for every flight they are taking uh, from SN Brussels. Mr. President, one question or a question mark hangs on all what you have said here. Your program, your vision, your personality some will be asking he was a member of this regime is he going to be different have you separated yourself completely from your roots in the present regime mr president i've been a member of this government as a minister delegate to the minister of justice and uh, there is no i will not shy away from that and there is no reason why I should be shameful because I've, I was a member of the government of uh, my country. I have always said that my own opinion on my appointment, I didn't ask for, and I've never asked for any appointment, whether as a dean of the faculty, where I was dean of the faculty of law and political science of University of Yaoundé for six years before, before I was appointed, appointed in the government. I didn't ask for, I didn't neither ask for the appointment as a minister delegate. But my own opinion is that I think I was appointed minister delegate because I was conducting, I was in charge of uh, uh, an important part of uh, the file uh, for the settlement of uh, uh, Bakasi issue, as you know. And uh, in that time, uh, my opponent, my counterpart, uh, uh, from Nigeria was the, mini, the, the, the Attorney General Minister of Justice of Nigeria. And I was then the, the, the Dean of the Faculty. So it was unbalanced. Uh, and so Nigeria could take a commitment through his minister and should Cameroon take the commin commitment only through uh, Dean of the Faculty. This is my own analysis of the reason why probably, I don't know the, the real reason because I didn't discuss that with the President of the Republic, neither with the uh, Prime Minister of Head of Government. But I assume that it is the reason why they appointed me, uh, they appointed me uh, as the minister delegate to the Minister of Justice. But I did my best, not only on, that, or, or on handling that file, but in my position in the Ministry, ministry of uh, Justice. Uh, should I make uh, you know, the, uh, the evaluation of what I did there, I think there will be no reason for me to, 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 to be shameful. Let me just... But you were a member of this regime, which you say today that has failed the country, yes. that has failed in its duties, that has brought Cameroon to its knees, yeah. and today you, you're coming like the Messiah. 
I'm have, not, you, have, uh, you, have you separated yourself that, that's, from your roots in this regime? That's, that is your word. I've never considered myself a Messiah. I've never used that word. I would never use that word because it's a blasphemy to use that word. If you are a Christian... No, when I'm talking about No, no, no. Messiah, let me. I'll go I'm, back. I'm, 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 not, referring to, I'm referring to that figure who wants to take over power who wants to save the country from economic hardship, from social problems, from political problems, that is what I'm referring to as Messiah, in quotes, not in the Christian context per se. Yes, but... Uh, I, have I, you I, separated yourself from your roots? In the, I have you seen any link between me and that government? Have you ever seen, even when I was um, the minister delegate in the Ministry of Justice, any link, particular political link between me and that government? I have never been a member of CPDM. I have never been a member of any political party before Cameroon Renaissance Movement. In 1992, I supported the, the candidature of uh, Nijon Fundi as a leader of uh, 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 SDF, but then as a uh, leader of uh, what they call Union pour le Changement. I supported his candidature. I was not a member of SDF. I've never been a member of SDF. I've never been a member of any political party. I've never been, and I think that uh, even the Deputy Secretary General of the CPDM said in Uh, future elections. And he's never been a member of CPDM. So I don't see why you should say I should separate myself, I should cut it. I, I've never, I have never had any link, political link with them. I've been appointed in the, in the government in the circumstances I've just described, described to you, in the context uh, I've dis described to you, and have discharge my duty as a Cameroonian proud of serving my country is in a particular uh, position. Afterwards, after I have I've had the, the sense that I've completed my assignment successfully, I've resigned. Nobody kicked me out of the government. Cameroonian, ready to bring its contribution based on the, you know, on the, the will of Cameroonians to bring a change to their lives, to bring my full contribution to that change. Mr. That's President, you, your last word to Cameroonians who are listening to you now. My last word, first of all, is that we want a peaceful change in Cameroon through elections, and that can happen only if Cameroonian go and register massively in numbers. Go and vote comes the day and make sure that they control the, their votes to avoid any cheatings so that the person, whether a lady or a man, who will be proclaimed the next president of this country after October 2018 is the choice of Cameroonian. Professor Maurice Camto, National President of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement here in political party and flag bearer of the party at the presidential election expected to be organized this year in the Republic of Cameroon. Thanks for accepting to be a guest in this edition of the program. Thank you very much for hosting me. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in this edition of the program. Take the appointment for another edition next Sunday. <laughs>